Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I am participating with the Facebook group Creative Arts Collaboration via a subgroup that's doing the hop with the hashtag Refreshing Summertime Art. So if you would please read the description, the little paragraph in the box down below in the description area and then follow the links for the other people who are also participating in the hashtag refreshing summertime art. Okay, so let's get started. I have really enjoyed quilling for many years now. Now I'm not proficient, don't make a lot of crazy things, I'm not folding paper to make faces, I make basic small projects because Honestly, my attention span is not long enough to do anything longer. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you is how I made the following things. So here's the first one. This is a little quilled bowl. It has a lid. And on top of the lid is a large bead cap. Then I took wire, threaded it through the little hole, anchored it put a bead on it, and then another, let me see if I can bring you in. Put another little bead on it. Right here, that little tiny, tiny gold bead. And then curled the top of it so that it would be an easy handle to open the lid. And you can see it's pretty small. It's not a very large container, and it was never meant to be. It's for people who like to collect small things. So the lid, and the body of it are this big. So uh, I have a size medium hand when I buy gloves. So there you go. It fits in the palm of my hand and I can almost close my hand over it. So that kind of gives you a scale. All right, so my best recommendation is to use quilling paper if you're a beginner. Now, if you're someone like me who's been quilling for a while and you don't mind taking lots of time to cut your own paper, that's fine. Quarter inch is really a good size to make the little bowls. That's, that's the perfect size. Now, quilling paper comes in larger sizes and a smaller size, but generally the middle of the road size people use is the one quarter inch. All right, so let's get started. What you're going to need is what's called a curling coach. This, oops, it's plastic, it's hard to see. Curling coach. Uh, it makes it easier to keep the circle under control as you're rolling it. And then you're going to need a quilling tool. Now this quilling tool has a slit in it. And you will put the paper in the slit and then turn. So what you're going to do is you're going to stick this inside the hole in the quilling coach to where you can see. You see that little metal piece sticking up right there by my finger. And then we're going to just turn, turn, turn. All right, so let me get the paper out. All right, so I'm going to start with dark purple. I put the little tool, the quilling tool inside there. Put the paper inside and you pull the paper almost to the very end. I guess I need to put you in further, right? There you go. I hope the camera focuses quickly. There we go. All right, so you almost like if those of you who bead, you've almost pulled the paper completely through and then you twist. And the thing about the curling coach is you control the, the roll, the tension, and everything by using your fingers. Now, I know other people hold it differently, but this is how I do it because I feel like I have the most amount of control. So we're going to roll, and then I'm going to pat it down with my thumb to make sure it stays nice and flat. And as you roll, so you're going to roll, and there goes the paper out of my, through the palm of my hand. And you're going to end up with this little tiny button. See that button? Now that. But in order for you to make it grow, you've got to insert more paper in here. Now, some people will glue the paper end to end. And some people will do this, which I prefer because there's no bumping usually. There's no crease in it from where the glue and the paper doesn't quite fit. You didn't glue it quite properly on there. You slide this piece inside and tuck it in the back of this one. And then you continue to roll and it blends the papers. One right into the other and no glue is needed. At least not on this piece. I have glued other pieces together because I didn't care how bumpy it looked. But this I care because these are very slick, nice bowls. And I don't want any crinkles. Alright, so I slip this in here. 
So I'm going to make my base purple. Well, purple and lavender or light purple. So I've got three or four pieces in here. Now let's see, where's my other color? I would like to up my color. So I'm going to pull a strip off of here. And I'm going to put the lilac inside here and continue to roll. Now let me show you what happens. When you only, when you, when the circle is small, it looks like you have a lot of lilac in there, but that's only one piece. The average size of the quilling paper is somewhere between 15 to 17 inches. I think these are 17 inches long. And I don't care really how long they are. I'm just telling you for general information. All right, so this is only one sheet or one strip. Now, if I put two, it would be a larger band. Like, let me see, let me get one of these. Like these are. These are larger bands because I put in two to four pieces of paper. You can see where the transition piece is, right there at the end of my thumb. So in the beginning, you can see they're very small. You have this that probably has one piece of paper in there because it's wound so tight and so small. And as I got out, I only used one paper in these. And then I started using more to make the stripes more pronounced on it. Well, I could have done it like this, but you would barely see the stripes. I like it much better when you can see the, um, when you can see everything. Sorry. So I'm going to put another piece of, another strip in here. And again, I'm just going to tuck it in there underneath the, the piece I've already got done and then continue to roll. So now my stripe looks really thick, more pronounced. All right now we're going to switch back to the other part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward through this part and all you're going to see me is roll, 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 roll. And at the end, then I'll show you how I take it off of the curling coach. All right, I've rolled as much as I want to roll because I don't want to make this too large and take up more time than what we've been allotted. So I'm looking for glue. Here we go. Put a little glue on the end. Not a lot. It doesn't take a ton of glue. And uh, usually people will take a toothpick, but I'm just going to use my finger real quick. And then I'm just going to fold it around here and just give it a little pat. To make sure it's going to stay and it needs to be even so this is completely flat on the top. Okay so there are two things that could happen with this. One of them's wrong or will cause you stress. <laughs> the other one is what you want to happen. So sorry what you want to happen is you want this to come out without ruining your stuff. Sometimes if you wind it too tight or there's a problem, when you pull this, you're going to end up pulling paper out through that little hole. That's a bad thing, and that will cause you to have a meltdown. Because <laughs> all your little paper things will go, <laughs> and then they'll be gone. So you give it a little wiggle this way, maybe up and down, just a little teeny wiggle. Slowly and patiently pulling it out. You don't want the paper to pull through the little hole. And there you go. So it's out of the hole. So if we have this. And then you need to pat down the middle. Some, some people will just take this and kind of pat it down to make sure the middle is, is nice, nice and firmly inside. All right, so there you have the either top or bottom, not really sure. All right, so I'm gonna roll again and I'm not gonna put that on camera. I will roll this again, then I will show you how I make them into shapes. Be right back. Okay, this looks like an ice cube tray. In another life, it probably would be. But 
what this is for is if you want something that's round and you want something that's more uniform, you take this disc, you put it on top of here, and then you run your hands down till it hits the bottom and it forms your cup. Whoops, let me put that back on there so you can see. And it forms your cup. And you didn't really have to do much to it. I don't always use this and I don't like how much of a lip there is on the bottom, so I'm gonna put it on this one and then extend the lip down. You have to be careful when you do this though. You can pop your stuff out and let me tell you what, it is not a happy occasion. Now, this is not gonna quite fit on this larger one here. I don't think I really wanna put that on there and have everything pop out on camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it here. Now I don't want the rounded bottom. I like my bottoms to be more flat. See how that's more flat? I like my bottoms to be flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this I'm going to put it on the flat surface and I'm kind of kind of mash down on it to form a flatter bottom. I like the flatter bottoms on mine. And so in order for it to look even, you just keep going around with your fingers and you just mash and manipulate with your fingers until you get it to where you think you want it. But make sure you look at it this way and this way because sometimes you'll get a part that like slants over or it's not quite even. So what I do is I put it on the table and if it lays nicely on the table, I can tell it's good. Uh, okay, so we got a nice, see, got a nice little flat bottom. I don't really like the rounded bottoms on everything. There's that one. Now we're going to do the lid. So the lid, I'm going to show you how to use this again and then I'm going to I, well, actually, no. I'm going to do this free form. So what I do is I take my fingers and I just kind of roll it in my hand and, and mold it. You can push it back in, but if you're going to do that, you need to be extremely careful. Again, popping out is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mold this in my finger with my fingers. I like the little pointy tops on them. But you also, if you're going to put a bead, you also need a place for the, sorry, you need a place for the bead to rest. So you don't want the top to be too rounded. Oh, well, maybe you do. I don't know. But see how it's a little slanty? Let me see. Does it lay flat? Does that look good sideways? See, it's tilting. You can see the stripe is a little tilty. Let's adjust it. You can make ridges in it and separate them, but like I said, you only are using a quarter inch piece of paper and you can only extend that out so far. All right, let me see if this will fit inside here. Voila, it fits. There we go, look at that. <laughs> All right, so I don't like that it's a really super duper tight fit. I'm not really crazy about that, but if I put Oh, I don't like this. So, let me show you how to fix it. This is not a fun part. You put it back in. You pull the glued part I glued. You pull that off. And you'll need to unroll carefully a couple of strips off of it. See, they just come out. So the only thing you ruined was the end of one strip and truly it doesn't matter because you can use this for another project later. I've got tons of these like that I've used for smaller things. No big deal. It's not a loss. It is ugly, but it's not a loss. All right. So I pulled one, two of those off of there. Let me set this down in here and see if I like. Yeah. Okay. Now when I did that, I mashed my bowl down. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this quick before I mess this up. Oh, just a hair. Come on. Just a hair, 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 hair. Eee! I should have laid it upside down on the table. There you go. And glue here. Now I need to fix this because I got it all out of shape when I mashed that little lid down there. I want my. And there we have it. <laughs> That's what you don't want to happen to your stuff. So now you have, <laughs> I didn't even touch it. <laughs> 
Now you got to re-roll the whole thing. The glue was not secured enough around the edge and this is what happens when you're not paying attention or your glue doesn't stick. So now let me go off camera and re-roll it and I'll be back. Okay, I re-rolled it. Hopefully I got it in the same sequence before. I tried to leave the roll on the table the way it was and pick from the inside to out. All right, here's my bottom. Let me see if I can do this without messing up my top. I'm going to mash it with my fingers gently so we don't pop it again. And I don't want... I don't want my top... And you can put stuff inside here and kind of roll... Oh, sorry. You can put stuff in here and kind of roll it around to make it smooth so it looks nice and uniform on the top. So let me see if this will fit. And this is leaning to one side. I don't think my board... Let me put this off camera real quick. Okay, there we go. And then this fits inside. And there we have it. There is a the little bowl. Now I'm going to run real quick and go get some pliers, some wire, and a little bead. And then I will show you how I did the tops. Okay, so I had to go get some more supplies out. And it took me a few minutes to decide what I wanted to do. And I still haven't decided. <laughs> so... What I have here is a rather large bead cap. Uh, let's see. That's a really big one. I'm not sure I want it to cover the whole top like that. Because then you're missing, well, maybe. I don't know. Huh. Okay, I'm not wild about that. Um, let's try the gold one. Now, I found some gold ones in there, and they're not really gold, but gold colored. That's a little bit smaller. I think would look nice on the top because it doesn't completely obscure. Let me put that in the middle a little bit more. Doesn't completely obscure the top. Much better than the than the silver, and this is what I have available, and this is what I'm using. All right, so I'm going to go with the gold. There is one step that needs to be done before I put the lid adornments on, and that is to take your glue so these don't pop out again. Put a goodly goodly amount, as my grandmother would say, of glue in here. Take your finger, or if you have this phobia about glue or getting your fingers wet, put a glove on, and then smooth the glue on the inside of the bowl. And then let it dry completely before you start pulling and tugging on it, or what happened earlier to me when it popped will happen to you, and then you'll have wet stuff, and then you will have ruined your paper. Once you put the glue on it like this, let it dry it's unlikely, unless you're pulling and tugging on it again, that it will pop out. All right, so there's the bottom. Here's the lid. Um, you can use Elmer's glue. It's a little thinner, which means it'll take a little less time to dry. I like Aline's Tacky Glue because I think it's a little more... It, it has a little more substance to it, so I'm hoping that it will give it a little more stability. So we're going to wait for these guys to dry, and then I will be back to put my jewelry in on the top. Be right back. Okay, while I was off camera, I decided that I really did not want to use the gold bead cap while I was looking for a top. So let me bring you in. I found another bead a cone paper bead I made a while ago and decided that I like how pointy it is. So I really don't need the bead cap because it covers the top. So it doesn't go exactly with this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it anyway because I like the contrast. I think it looks very cool with the pointy top on it. So instead of using gold wire, I'm going to use silver or actually what this is called is tinned copper. It's 24 gauge, so this is kind of small. I think maybe I need a, um, a larger gauge, so let me go get that real quick. Because this, I think this is too skinny. 
Okay, so after rooting around in my box of wire, I found the zebra wire, and this is 22 silver finished copper wire. So it's really copper in the inside and then silver on the outside. So I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to cut. I don't know if that's, that'll be long enough. I'm going to cut a piece off. Oh, there it goes, unwinding. And then I'm going to smooth this out. There is a tool to do this, but I'm not going to stop the camera again to go get it. So what I want to do is I want to thread the wire through the hole in the paper bead. No biggie. Then I'm going to take this and thread it through the hole inside the top of the lid. Now this may be a little bit more challenging because number one, there's crinkled up paper in the center from using the slotted tool and there's glue in there that's not quite dry. Ah, there we go. Just poke from the other side. All right, so hopefully that'll give me a, there we go. Good enough hole. All right, so I want to prevent this from going through to the other side. You could put a little bead in here and crimp it. You can do this a million ways, but I'm going to do the quickest way that I can think of for the camera right now is I'm going to roll this up with the pliers into kind of a circle because 22 wire is very pliable. You could do this with your fingers, actually, if you don't have pliers. You can get yourself started with a toothpick or some, something small. Just roll it up. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Because you want to make sure nothing's going to pull that through the hole. And then I'm going to push it through here. Then I'm going to tilt it to one side. I'm going to tilt it there. Tilted it to one side. And then I'm going to kind of give it a little crook in the neck so that it'll lay more in the center. Well, maybe not. I just don't want anything to pull my, my wire out. It's a little off center. There we go. Just play around with it until you get it in there so it, it satisfies you. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but it, you know, when you look on the other side of it, it looks cool. All right, so got that. Now I'm going to put this through here. And I have to decide what I want to do with this. On these others, I did a little curly cue, little curly cue with the bead, sorry. But I think this time I'm just going to do the curly cue and forget the bead. Actually, no, I need the bead. I'll be right back. Okay, I found these little teeny beads here. And I think I might like to do, do I want to do a light one or a dark one? Maybe a light one so it'll contrast, contrast with the one on top. There we go. Let's put this on here and see if I can get the wire through here. I didn't think about the wire being the wrong gauge. Ah, perfect. All right, so that way, nothing will pull out. I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter because I don't really want it to be hugely tall. Then I'm going to take my pliers. And I'm going to turn based on the nose of the plier to get the little circle started. And let's see, I want it a little tighter than that. Maybe not like that. <laughs> I want it to show better. There we go. I think maybe with this, with these, I need to do this. And you just keep rolling and rolling until you get down to where the bead is and make sure you have this on there tight and by rolling the wire it pulls this tighter right here in the middle and then you take this and kind of crimp the neck of it so it sits upright let's 
see, I need to crank, I need to roll it down just a little tighter. And then, kind of crimp it a little bit. Let's see if it sits on there tight enough. Nope, not tight enough for me. I think what I need to do is undo this, the top part, and glue my bead on. Let's see if I can do that without messing everything up. So when I'm instead of taking it apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of glue and run it around here if I can keep from messing everything up. There we go. I'll spread it out a little bit. Just spread a little bit of glue on there, and then that way it creates a nice seal on it. Should have done that first. <laughs> That's the one thing about doing this stuff is you live and learn as you do it. There we go. That looks nicer. It's nice and firm. Now let's try this again and see if we busted our wire, if our wire will bust. Because wire gets wire fatigue, if you play around with it too much, it will snap. And then you will have to start this whole process all over again with your wire. And if you don't want to scratch the wire, you need to use coated pliers. There you go. There's your little lid. So, now instead of having to dig in the bowl with your fingernails to pull it out, you have a little, you have a little topper on it. Come on, camera focus. There we go. You have a little topper on it so that Kind of looks like a witch's hat, doesn't it? <laughs> Look at that. All right, so there's your little bowl with your little topper on it, which would make a cute little gift to somebody who appreciates little tiny things. Let me do we'll tell you about one more thing. I would take some kind of a gloss medium, or if you don't have any of that, I watered down um, Aline's tacky glue and took a paintbrush, sorry, and painted over this to give it that gloss. You can use glossy accents. Just be careful. Don't get heavy-handed with it. Um, you can dip it in polyacrylic sealer. You can use Mod Podge, but I recommend you not do use Mod Podge only because if you live in a humid area, when you put the lid on, it's going to stick and it's not going to come off easily if you let it sit, sit around for a while. In the winter months, it might loosen up, but in the summer months, it's going to be a booger to get this off of here without ripping your stuff up. You could use... Elmer's glue. You could do um, matte medium, a very thin liquidy matte medium over it. I like the idea of the matte medium. Mine is very thick, so I, I will have to water it down. But there you go. There is your little quilled bowl to give as a gift. And look, you, well, if it went so tall, <laughs> you might be able to put it in your hand. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Again, this is just another, remi an, another reminder that this is the Creative Arts Collaboration, hashtag refre refreshing summertime art. Please check out the other artists down below, follow their links, and enjoy their art. Thanks. Bye, everybody.